Online training can overcome the limitations of time, distance, and financial resources. It is a flexible format that allows you to attend lectures from anywhere in the world and at a time that is convenient for you. With that in mind, we present to you our new online education platform, Learning Geoscience. This platform is the focal point for all EAG online educational activities, helping you keep up to date with changes within the geoscience and engineering disciplines remotely. Whether you are a student or an experienced professional looking for new paths in your professional development, you have come to the right place. Our Learning Geoscience platform offers an integrated set of interactive and self-paced online courses from experienced instructors within the industry and academia. You can also find free learning materials, including e-lectures and webinars that provide you with the latest developments in the geoscience and engineering community. Keep pace with the digital movement with our wide range of courses and interactive learning tools. Visit www.learninggeoscience.org to enroll now. Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining this session on learning geoscience for the future. As you have seen, there are great developments coming up. Today, we will discuss some of these with a panel of experts who are contributing to EAG education. If you'd like to ask any questions on EAG education, let us know in the chat box. Joining us today is Colin Macbeth, the EAG education officer. Hi, happy to be here. We will also be talking with some of our instructors. Hello, my name is Jaap Bond. Uh, I'm happy to contribute to this particular session. Hello, my name is Bernard Monteron, and uh, it's great to be here with you. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining today. My name is Ian Jones, and I'm a geophysical advisor with Ion Geophysical, based in the UK in our office near London. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Junkon Jung, and I'm very happy to be here with you all. Thank you all for joining. Colin, the first question is for you. What are the role of professional associations such as EAG in supporting members to acquire the right knowledge and skills throughout their professional career? Well, I, I would say that a, a key role of professional associations such as the, the EAGE is in education and training of their membership. Uh, and at the EAGE, we, we offer education by the membership for the membership. And that ensures that we uh, provide a, a broad base of targeted training needs, regardless of whether you're a, a student, early career, worker, professional, uh, wishing to enhance your, your role in your company, or even a mature uh, researcher. And more these days about the switch to online learning. Is online learning the future of continuing education? Online education is, is one of the, the biggest trends to come out of the, the last six months of the, the current pandemic. And uh, one thing's for sure, it's, it's here to stay for, for the future, especially as, as companies become more uh, cost sensitive and also as, as travel still becomes uh, an issue in, in the future. And, and I would say as online um, education develops uh, and uh, technologies in, enhance, it will certainly very much be a, a tool for the future education of our membership. Let us now hear from the EAGE instructors who are pioneering this format for the EAGE. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll turn to you first. Um, as an experienced instructor who's been teaching for many years, what advantages do you see in the new online education format? I think that the main advantage is that it will reach people you otherwise wouldn't reach because they would have to travel and make large expenses. And giving these interactive courses like the blended learning version, people will be able to really apply it in exercises and then that enhances the learning quite a bit. 
And now to Bernard, uh, what are the advantages of combining self-paced elements and direct interaction with the instructor? The, the advantage is you get uh, the best of both worlds. So, uh, um, of course, with self-paced learning, you have no pressure to complete the assignment at the same speed as, as others. Uh, you, you know, fast learners uh, don't have to wait on others and people who like to take their time uh, can do it. Um, you are in control of your own schedule. And of course, uh, having direct interaction with the instructor allows you to ask questions, get immediate answers, which is great. What can we expect from next year's EAG education program? Well, members will probably um, have seen uh, on our website that we've already started with the learning geoscience platform. Uh, and inside that platform, there will be a number of online offerings. And there's been a flurry of these offerings towards the end of this year. So uh, we have a thing called the IOSC, which is the Interactive Online uh, Short Courses. We also have converted our popular EETs, that's EOGE Education Tours, into a, an online version. And, and, and you'll notice that there's quite a few of these at the end of this year, beginning of next year. And what we hope to do is to populate more offerings um, throughout next year. Now, what, what are they? Well, they, they basically uh, come into three categories. The first category is our, our complementary material or our free material. And there you'll see things like uh, e-lectures, uh, e-webinars. We hope to uh, create more and more uh, as uh, the membership demands. The second category really is these uh, these interactive short courses. These short courses are, first of all, they're taught by an instructor uh, online. So you have a, a certain amount of time, whether it's several days of a few hours per day, um, but it might be a whole week uh, with several hours per day. Now, at the end of that, you also get to um, talk to the instructor interactively in, in a Q&A. So quite a sort of in-depth uh, course. And then the third type of course that we're going to start to develop is with uh, partner organizations such as universities and companies. At the moment, we have one course uh, on geology with, with Shell, and we're going to start to expand that offering um, in the, the coming year. So quite a range of uh, educational tools that we hope will will touch uh, most of uh, the, the needs of our membership. So today we have some some great examples of the these online offerings, and I, I'd like to ask each one present uh, to say a little bit about their course. The course that I'm going to give here now is called Machine Learning for Geophysical Applications. The main idea is to let people know what machine learning can do in the geosciences. So it's not going to go into great detail as far as the algorithm is concerned, but it learns you how machine learning can be used. So the overall workflow of machine learning, and it's applied to a case where we have different lithologies and different pore fluids and how we can do classification, regression, and so on. Okay, so the title of my course is Developing Deep Learning Applications for the Old Field from Theory to Real World Projects. The format is going to be uh, five sessions of about one hour each during five consecutive days. And uh, there will be a mix of presentations and practicals. And uh, the last day is going to be um, presentations by the participants of the results on the AI projects. So it's going to be five days on AI. The course today is the online version of the EET 13 course that I taught over the past two years, and that's specifically entitled Velocities, Imaging and Waveform Inversion, with a subtitle, The History of the Evolution of Representing Their Subsurface, or words to that, that effect. And specifically what I'm looking at in this course is a non-mathematical overview of the methods used for building images and the corollary of that, which is how you build the models to drive those images. And specifically, what I want to get across to the audience here 
is not how to go away and write one of these algorithms, but what the underlying assumptions are behind each of these algorithms. Yeah, thanks very much. And so now another question, uh, what would you like participants to take away from your courses? I think at the end of the course, what you will have learned is actually how to apply particular methods in machine learning. It's using a very simple user-friendly workflow pattern, work platform called Vika, and it allows you even to apply that particular method you've done in the course to your own data set if you want to. So at the end of this course, participants will fully understand what deep learning is, how it works, how they can apply it to their own projects, and most importantly, what trap uh, to avoid falling into. Because as we know, everybody in the industry today, regardless of what they're doing in geosciences, will at some point come across an image or the gathers, pre-stack gathers associated with that image, which is really an image seen from different angles of incidence or different surface offsets. And if you're working with those things, it really is important to have some understanding of the limitations of each method used to create those objects, whether it's an image or the gathers, and also when they're appropriate to use, when they're inappropriate, and as a function of those limitations, what the various pitfalls or artifacts might be that could be misleading. So, Ian, uh, your course is also part of the Education Tour programme of the EAGE. Are you excited about teaching it in this new self-paced format? As you'll be aware if you've taken courses that are live or sat through recordings, each format is very, very different. A live audience gives you the opportunity to ask questions on the fly as the course progresses, but quite often by the time you get to an end of a course and you've, you've gone home, things come to mind and you're wondering, well, I'd like to go over that material again and think about it a bit more, go into it in a bit more detail. With a recorded format, you've got the option to do that. You can go over something, think about it, maybe find more information on that topic by going online and looking for things, but it gives you the ability to digest what's been presented and review it in a lot more detail. So with a recorded format, it offers that, that facility. In addition, with the present COVID situation or financial constraints, being able to travel is severely limited. So it makes it practical for a wider audience to access educational material by having access to a video library of some sort. And the EAG's Learning Geoscience Library is one excellent platform for achieving that. There's a wide range of materials available, wide ranges of recordings. Some of them are long courses of several hours and some are short 20 minute clips. Either way, the material is at your fingertips to make use of to further your education within your career development. Very true. Thank you, Ian. And there is more. The new EAG Learning Geoscience platform will also host courses from our industry partners. Um, so, so one of the first ones is Geology for Non-Geologists, offered by Shell, in which the participants can experience virtual field trips. Could you tell us a little bit more about Well, the this? Geology for Non-Geologists course uh, consists of two elements. The first part are lectures on basic geology and petroleum geology. And the second part is a virtual field trip, which is completely new in the industry. Also, I have to mention, it is a self-paced course. So you could do it at your own time, anywhere where you are at any time. What would you like to advise the geoscience community when it comes to continuing education? For future geoscientists, I think going into the field is very, very important. And I strongly believe that the best geologist is the geologist that has seen most rocks. Now, this course, Geology for Non-Geologists, makes a start to go and see rocks. However, it is virtual. So I hope in the future you will have the opportunity to go into a real field trip and touch the real rocks. We hope so too. And we wish a great start to all aspiring geologists through this online course. Back to you, Colin. Many in our community are asking this. How does one become an EAG instructor? Well, one of the important things about becoming an EAG instructor is, first of all, to look at our existing portfolio and to see if you have a course that is fills a gap uh, in the, the, the current range of 
offerings, I think. Secondly, consider how many days your course is going to run over and how many hours in that day you're going to teach. After that, there's a, a simple form that you can fill in that gives all the details of your course. That would then go to the education committee. Uh, we would then set up an interview with you and we can discuss and talk about your course. We can modify it if necessary. Uh, and then after that process, we would approve your course and we would insert it in the catalogue, schedule it for uh, a future viewing. One final question. Colin, as a seasoned educator, how do you expect continuing education to evolve over the next five years? Well, I would, I would say that the next five years is going to be a rather exciting journey as uh, the membership moves along the trajectory of the energy transition. I think we're going to see uh, a change in the, the topics uh, that we are offering uh, on the educational platform to, that, to map onto that, that journey along the the energy transition, I would say top on the list, for example, is our subjects like geothermal, uh, CCUS, uh, and other topics related to renewable energy. So that's going to be a fascinating journey. And obviously, we want our educational products uh, to keep pace with that. I think second on the list relates to the membership base itself in terms of geographical diversity. And I think we see the EOGE as, as slowly growing, uh, globalizing. Uh, and I think with that, we're, we're looking at how our educational products can, can reach all parts of, of the world that have, of course, internet. And I think, I think that's something we'll, we'll see a continuing trend with. I think the third and uh, most important thing is that the online products themselves will continue to develop. We, we see, we've already uh, mentioned virtual field trips. I think the use of 3D visualization in general to put the, the person inside uh, a particular scenario like a field trip um, are going to you know, uh, continue to develop. And there, there are massive uh, technological advances in terms of, of education that are going, to, are going to continue. So even when we're out of this, uh, this phase with the, the pandemic, we're still going to see the need for all of this online education. We will have blended tools to bring in as well. So I, I see the next five years as a, a fascinating journey for the EAGE, especially in terms of our education. So finally, uh, thank you all for listening, and I would invite you to, to keep an eye on the developments of the EAG education in the future as we begin this exciting journey uh, online. If, if you have any questions, we are here for you. Please write your questions down in the, the chat function, or you can also talk to a staff member at the EGE Community Hub. Thanks very much.